This is Virgin Radio. I'm Andy Goldstein. And it's my last show today. Ah, uh, it's my last show because, uh, of course, this is, or this was Graham Norton slot, and then he went, and the lovely people at Virgin Radio said to me, listen, before we sort ourselves out and we work out what we're going to do, which, of course, they do know that now, would you mind filling in for the five weeks in between? And I went, of course, I'd love to. And in those five weeks, I have been blessed with wonderful guests. I mean, I've booked them all, to be fair, but still wonderful. Natalie Appleton, Ollie Murs, Tom Grennan, Andy Bell, Gem Archer from Oasis, uh, Heidi Range, Lisa Snowden, Darren Bent, my co-host on Drive Time on, on TalkSport, Darren Bent. Robbie Williams was on yesterday's show, right? No disrespect to any of them, I love them all, but they all personally pale into complete insignificance to me when I found out last week who my last guest on the last show was going to be, because as a kid growing up, I had pictures of him on my wall, I listened to his music, I bought all his albums, I was his biggest fan, and I never, ever thought I was going to speak to him until now. Hello and good morning, Nick Kershaw. Good morning, Andy. How are you doing? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm very good, Nick. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. A bit husky. I had a, a shouty wedding last night, so... Oh, you got married or someone else? No, I didn't. I didn't get married, but <laughs> someone else did. Yeah. Nick, I can't believe I'm speaking to you. Literally, I, I do, described it earlier on as this felt like, as I was building up to this moment, this felt like being a kid again on Christmas Eve, knowing that the present, the big present that I asked for is coming and it's arrived in the shape of you. Thank you so much for coming on. I've got so much to talk to you about. Um, well, let's go. Yeah, let's go. So, so listen, as a kid growing up, right? You know, yeah. you sort of don't know, you don't You don't look out. Um, music back then wasn't as accessible as it is now. You didn't have Spotify, you didn't have YouTube and so on. So it was literally, for me as a kid growing up, it was probably just top of the pops and listening to the radio and that was about it. Yeah. When, when you got into music, who who were your aspirations? Who did you look up to? Because one of the, one of the questions I was asking our listeners was what pictures of pop stars did they have on their walls? I had a picture of you on my wall. Who as a kid growing up did you have on your wall? I had a picture of Alice Cooper hanging himself on my wall. It's a happy childhood, was it? <laughs> no, it's great. My mum was a bit concerned, but and next to that was David Webb, who's a Chelsea footballer. Who we don't go there, right? Um, but yeah, I, so about you've just played one of them. I mean, Bowie was a huge. He, I was a huge fan of Bowie, but I mean, my my I used to watch the Whistle Test on a Tuesday night, Bob Harris, and that's that's where I got a lot of my kind of early music from. And and when you got into music then, was it? So as a kid, I wanted to be a snooker player, right? And I was never, yeah. sadly, I was never that good. I was okay, but I was never good. But when I would say that to my parents, I want to be a snooker player, they'd look at me and go, okay, what do you really want to do? What was it for you when you said, or I, I don't know if you had the conversation with your parents saying, yeah. I want to be a musician? Well, I kind of did, but I, I, my brother had already paved the way for me, my older brother, because he, he flunked out of college to become a dolphin trainer. So, Are you serious? So it, yeah, so when he ended up sort of running a marine park in in the south of France, so I've, I've, you know, he 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 paved the way. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many questions. How did? Why did he want to become a dolphin trainer? I don't know. It's just some random happenstance thing. He just wandered into Coventry Zoo one one day, and they had a couple of dolphins had thrown in a swimming pool, and and he he got he got friendly. <laughs> he got tassy with the the fella there, and the fellow there m said he was leaving. Did he want to take over? And he went, Yeah, all right. How bizarre. This is so not a conversation I thought I was going to have with Nick Kershaw about dolphin training. Um, listen, let's talk about your music then, shall we? Because it's it's a long time ago that you uh, you had the, the first album came out, the first hits. Was it 1984? It was 1984. So this year is um, the 40th God. anniversary of that first album and the second album. Wow. So they both came out. You're, you're referring to Human Racing and The Riddle. They both came out that year. That's quite, yeah. that's quite bizarre that an artist would bring out two albums in the same year. Why did that happen? I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, really. I mean, it, it was just suggested because it was the beginning of the year the first album came out and then the record company saw Christmas looming and they thought, well, let's get another one out before Christmas. And I, in my, you know, stupidly said, yeah, all right then. <laughs> that... um, not having any songs or anything to <laughs> to make the second album. but um, And I literally wrote nine of the ten songs in two weeks. Wow. Because yeah. obviously we'll talk about your songwriting because, of course, you're synonymous with so many great songs, including um, for Chesney Hawks, The One and Only. But we'll talk about that in a minute. I really want to talk to you about that first album, Human Racing, because I think I'm right in saying your first song from it or your first release was I Won't Let the Sun Go Down On Me, which didn't really chart that well. Was it number 47? Yeah, something like that. That was in September of 1983. But that, that in those days, record companies built 
careers you know that's just the start and it got me name around and got me played on a few radio stations and stuff like that so when wouldn't it be good came out in january 84 um the you know the it was it was all prepared for me see so that that, did, was, that wasn't considered a, a bad thing yeah that that came out and got to number four didn't it wouldn't it be good yeah was that the, was that the um was that the music video where you were sort of going up round stairs in a building you had the sort of fluorescent jacket on that kept changing color was that the one that's the one, yeah. That was a that was a derelict building just outside Buckingham Palace, right? Um, which probably is worth a bit more money now, I would imagine. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but yeah, that was that was the one. I ended up in a field in in, in a, a, uni, the Cambridge University Observatory uh, at sort of four o'clock in the morning. It was it was quite quite brutal. They don't make music videos like that anymore. Listen, Let the sun go down on me. This is Virgin Radio, and Nick Kershaw is with us. Nick, when you um, when you hear that song, uh, you've obviously played it millions of times. You've heard it thousands of times. Do you still enjoy it as much as when you wrote it for the first time? Um, yeah, I do. I come to this particular song. I wasn't madly, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't. I wasn't sure about the way it ended up, to be honest, because it was all spe- always supposed to be kind of a bit of a bit of a protest folk song and it turned into a sort of pop anthem but that's that's fine i mean i love playing all my old songs um live really now i went through a period when it was they were a bit of a monkey on me back but then you just kind of realize how good these songs have been to you over the years and Uh, and uh, and, and, you know how people react to them and it's just such a a great feeling for the artist when that happens you mentioned earlier on that you're doing a tour you've got your 40th anniversary before Mm. i let you go we'll give it a big plug because lots of people listening would love to come and see you live i know you've got loads of gigs uh you do have a website which is nick kershaw obviously it's nik nick kershaw.net but we'll talk about that before i let you go because i know loads of people listening will be desperate to see you um i want to talk to you just briefly about live age right because we go back to around about 1985 i I think you're about 26 or 27 so relatively relatively young surrounded by all these absolute superstars from the world of music you mentioned you're a big bowie fan can you remember a lot about your time at, at live aid can you remember mixing with these superstars there's there's a few moments yeah i mean you you, you, you mentioned bowie i mean I, I didn't see him during the day at all but when we got off stage um we all got chucked on minibuses to go back to the conference center and i'm sitting on the bus aware that someone behind me is singing do they know it's christmas and i'm going I know that voice, and I turn around. And Bowie is sitting behind me. It's like then it's just insane. I mean, that whole the whole day was like that, really. I mean, I remember sitting in the royal box watching um, watching Queen do their thing, and I'm thinking people are going to remember this. This is a bit special, you know. It was an astonishing day. It really wasn't it was such a privilege to have been there. Did you realise at the time? Because when you're young, usually you don't realise if you are part of something that a lot of people look back at and think that was just a great moment in time. Did you realise when it was happening, it was going to be as big as it was? Yeah, I think we did. I mean, I remember with Bob Geldof uh, press ganging people at Heathrow Airport in the January and saying that we're going to do a gig because the, the Band-Aid single had come out. We're going to do a gig. Do you want to do it? And I said, yeah, all right. But then it was going to be Hammersmith Apollo or something. And then it was going to be Wembley Arena. And then it was going to be Wembley Stadium. And then there was going to be two billion people watching on the telly. So we were kind of aware of the fact it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger as, as time got closer. So, yeah, I think everybody knew it was, it, was, it was something special. Yeah. Even the clothes, the haircuts, everything. It was just such a great moment in time, <laughs> wasn't it, for music? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I mean, you know, you're going to obviously. I, I bump into people every day that uh, wouldn't know what Live Aid was because they, you know, weren't you know, were born thirty years later. Yeah. But, that's, but but yeah, I think of, of a certain generation that that's that people are never going to forget that. No. Uh, listen, you've had an unbelievable career. Nine, is it nine albums you released. The last one coming out was it Oxymoron in 2020? Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, when you look back at what you've achieved. Is there still more to come? Are you happy with what you've done? Because obviously you should be, right? I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've never released anything I wasn't very proud of, um, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, obviously you, you wake up in the morning and you think, well, I could do more. Is this it? You know, and I'm, but I, hopefully there's another album in me and it'll be better than the last one. You know, you're still, you're still learning your craft and you, you, that's the, a good reason why you should be getting mm. better. So... Yeah, I, I'm I'm very proud of a lot of, of a lot of things, a lot of album tracks, a lot of gigs I've done, and um, yeah, absolutely. You should. What I love about your music, I was listening to it coming in this morning because I knew you obviously on your music. It 
it, even now, that last album, the Oxymoron one, it, it's of course it sounds like new music today, but it still yeah. has the Nick Kershaw stamp, if you like, on it. And it's it's something that when I'm listening, it puts a smile on my face because I'm a big fan of yours from as a kid, of course, growing up, and I listen to your albums now, and it's still even though it's different, it still sounds the same. If if that makes sense. Well, I think it's because I grew up in the seventies and the um, and and. And, and music in the 80s, you were pretty much allowed to do what you want. And we were kind of, um, that's, I've, I've learned that over the years that, you know, I haven't had it beaten out of me by sort of um, nothing wrong with stage schools and, and Lipper and the Brits school and stuff like that. But it seems to turn people into, you know, a certain kind of thing. So uh, it's, I think acts back in those days has sort of retained a bit more personality. I don't know. No, I agree. I, no, not at all. I totally agree with you. But listen, what do we know? We're getting old. Um, since I've been talking to you, I can I see the WhatsApps coming in the text. They're going absolutely bonkers. Uh, basically alluding to the same question. When can we see more of Nick Kershaw? So you, you touched on it ever so briefly before. You're doing this sort of 40, 40th anniversary tour. People can go to nickkershaw.net to see you live. Um, just tell me when it starts. How long is it going on for? And roughly, are you all around this country? Yeah, it starts in October. We do. We we're playing both the Riddle and the Human Racing albums in their entirety, which has never happened before, oh, and will never happen again. Um, and we got some shows in the summer as well, which were left over from last year's tour, which is a slightly different thing. But yeah, well, I'm, check out the website, mate. It's all on there. Okay, if I want to come and see, because I do, are there, mm. do I get VIP back part? I, I can't. I'm not insured to mix with the general public. Can you sort that out for me? <laughs> Of course, man. Oh. Nick, it, 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 honestly, I can't tell you. It's a massive box for me to to tick off today talking to you. I huge fan of yours. You're one of my idols as a kid growing up. I love your music. I love the one we're going to play in just a moment. But thank you so, so much for coming on. Have a great weekend. It's a real pleasure. Cheers, Andy. Lovely chatting. You too. Nick Kershaw, and this is one of my favourites of his, The Riddle. 